uh, testimonies and prayer requests tonight. Anyone have anything they wanted to bring before the Lord? I do. <coughs> I, do have sure, James. I do have something. Um, I've never had this happen. Was, uh, Shiva told me sometimes that the one dropped the door. We were, uh, it was out. Cheryl was uh, taking her house and I was on the way out there to walk home. This guy in the van hit my left arm and now my finger has got a better feeling in it. And I don't know. I know this is a touch of God. Then I, the guy came over to ask me, I'm all right, I'm fine. Next thing I know, my finger's 10 times better than it was. Because <laughs> I hit a little bit, and I was going to get my finger right back in place. They're going to imagine they're going to run over you. Did <laughs> <laughs> nice. you know, they not finger traffic or what? I don't know. Uh, okay. But I'll say. Uh, all things were. Was this last night by any chance? No, it wasn't last night. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, were you over there? No, huh? it no. no, I don't have nice. a van either. I'm, I'm saying. <laughs> it was uh, <laughs> a week ago. Then I was out there. She went in to do something. <laughs> and I was <laughs> and, uh, just walking home and this van hit me. And next thing I know, my fingers. All better. Yeah. Praise the Lord. It's never been like that. And it's all known. No, it ain't no doubt. No, no. Got knocked back into place. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Well, and I know Sheila shared on Facebook John's testimony. She had asked for prayer for John, and he said he felt like a, a truck had run over his hand, and he asked for prayer, and he went home from work. Yeah, his hand. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I was, that's why I was like, was it last night? Was John feeling your pain, and you got the healing? And, anyway. Um, but yeah, so she asked for prayer, and then he said he came home, took a pain pill, went to bed, woke up, and his hand feels better than it has before he ever had the pain. So apparently, if you've you got hand issues, pray. The Lord has favor for hand healings right now. Go. So Amen. anybody, carpal tunnel, anything going on, lift those holy hands of the Lord and let him heal them. That's right. In Jesus' name. Amen. Arthritis be gone. Any, uh, anyone else? Yeah. Yes, Saturday afternoon after my uh, sabbatical, uh, he's uh, in the wood out of my truck. And there were some uh, chucks out in there that I need to split up, and I don't want to fire up the lock splitter, so I figured I'd just go get my splitting ball and just bust it up like I used to. And uh, about an hour, an hour and a half later, I sat down in the chair so I could get dizzy a little bit, and I thought, oh man, this is very good. What's going on here? It seemed okay for the rest of the night, but Monday morning at 5 o'clock, I got up to get ready for work, and I could not stand up. I could not stand up. I went through all the exercises for ear ear reset of the uh, crystals in your ears and stuff. That wasn't working. Uh, so they got some drum me, and that wasn't working. Uh, finally, uh, I was led to understand it wasn't the inner ear. It was a, a neck alignment situation. So Cindy has a chiropractic pillar, pillow, and I'm resting on it with my head cradled in the saying, I'm claiming healing on this rest. I said, you got to straighten out. Because this will be my first sit day of the year at work. And, uh, and uh, so I'm not, I'm not claiming this. I'm, I'm claiming the healing is what I'm claiming. And, and uh, <clears throat> I went out about three, four hours later, went out my recliner and everything, just like two, number two pencils. I heard snap three times in my neck. Mm -hmm. Was sounded like everything started lining up, and for the rest yeah. of the day started clearing up. And uh, praise God, uh, everything's mm -hmm. clear, everything's good. Um, I'm ready to run. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Maybe next time just fire up that log splitter. Right? <laughs> That's gonna say. I got to be the one. I just didn't want to start it up. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Jesus did want him to put a little water on the fire. <laughs> Oh, praise the Lord. Oh. <laughs> uh, anyone else? Anyone else? I, praise the Lord. I had to go back to the uh, eye surgeon yesterday, and uh, everything's healed fine. They did all their post-op tests and everything. Thank the Lord. There, so thank the Lord. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Yeah, Tim, did you have something you want to share? Yes, and I, uh, I appreciate everybody praying for coming over to Indianapolis uh, to put the our D-Mac truck inside the National Convention Center. And it was just a, it's a day of blessing because I had never driven a big truck inside it. And uh, this one guy helped us find where they have a marshaling center where everybody stays and then when it's your time to go over there. 
And we just kept running to the guy all day long. I mean, when they we got a number to go in, he ended up stopping and helping. The doors are really huge, and the building's huge, you know. And he, he watched me and helped me get in there. And then, um, it was first the people was going to pull me in, but then I had a diagram for how I was supposed to go in. I know that ain't, I got to go in like this for a president. So we had to blindside back into the spot inside this auditorium. Mm -hmm. And there's just people walking all over, you know. And this guy was sitting there with boxes, I guess, waiting for his crew to come in. And all of a sudden, he just jumped up and started helping me and, oh, and seeing, you know. And, and I almost got a truck about 10 times trying to hit this spot. You can't see the lines on the ground. They got them taped there, but they're mm -hmm. about a half inch mm -hmm. wide. You can't see them at all. And he helped me, and I was just so thankful that that guy was there. You know, I didn't ask him or nothing. He came up, and I knew he was a truck because the signals and everything was just right. And he, he kept watching, and I was just absolutely so thankful mm -hmm. for having uh, people like that. And you know, God is with me, praying, yeah. and and you, you feel your prayers. I mean, um, sometimes that something going, something new is nervous, but I always know that God goes ahead. Of you. Yeah. You know, God had the right people there at the right time, so we just want to thank the Lord for that. Amen. Amen. Praise Praise the Lord. Lord. So Monday night was our first class, and we had over 50 people show up. Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, and we had some vendors there. And uh, almost all of them sold out of everything that they brought. And um, it was a very wonderful night. I almost didn't know what to do with myself because I didn't have to do anything. I just <laughs> greeted people and I got to talk to people. And I'm used to having to teach and do all these other things. And I did teach, but only for about 20 minutes at the end of the night. And it was just really it was really wonderful. And people were so excited and they couldn't come, you know, can't wait to come back on Monday, and so um, I'm just hoping, I'm believing that it's going to be that big or bigger every Monday. Meaning that people are just going to want to learn the truth, and you know they they'll do whatever it takes to get that truth. Amen. And then um, if uh, we could have some prayers for some doors to open up for us for our business. Um, we have a, a door closing in, a, in one of our stores that our kombucha is on tap. So it would be really nice to have, you know, five in its place. Praise <laughs> the Lord. How about seven? I was thinking seven before yeah. you said five. Yeah, yeah, seven. yeah. Se seven would be great too. I'm okay with seven. I'm great with seven. So. Yeah. Jubilee, seven times seven. Yep. I think you're going to ask. You just will ask big. <laughs> Well, then I want it all. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> favor, Lord. Favor for yeah. agriculture. Yeah. Anyone else tonight? Amen. All right. Well, let's... I just have to say, though, this, this 50, over 50 people in one of these classes is huge because, um, well, she would kind of test. I've had anywhere from two people to about 15 people in our classes last year. And to have this huge turnout like we did, it was just it was overwhelming, and I have to say, it was like 15 minutes before the class was going to start, and there was like five people there, and I'm like, okay, this is doable, and then pfft, they all just came in, and I was like, oh, okay, we can do this too. This is okay. It was just, it was just, it was just, it was huge. It was monumental. It was amazing. It was amazing. It was just amazing. And you're on the news too. Oh, we were on the news. It came Monday morning. We were on the news, Channel Five. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I, I made the lady try uh, Master Tonic Lodge. <laughs> She didn't like it though. <laughs> Go figure. It works. It works. <laughs> Don't taste good, but it works. It's <laughs> medicine. It's not. It juice. is. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah. Yes. 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 Lord. Bring people who seek the truth. Mm -hmm. And bring favor, Lord. Anyone yeah. else? She looks like Evelyn um, is going to the doctor tomorrow, and she may have to get a new pacemaker put in. So I'm um, up and down this ring all the way because she had told me something, but I scattered her right here. So, but I know she's talking about a new pacemaker and all the swelling and even her legs. She can't hardly walk. So keep her in your prayers. Mm -hmm. And I think most of you heard about John's testimony. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he's doing great. Did you hear? Did you read? 
I, I didn't read, but I just heard. Okay. I just heard. Yeah, I mean, I went upstairs this morning, and he's like, they're both good. <laughs> All right. Thank you, George. Good hands, people. That's right. <laughs> Continue to be a uh, stand with Cindy. Her uh, foot that got burned uh, from the boil and water. Mm. I found out last night there was water in it also. Mm. So uh, that's what caused a lot of the uh, injury and stuff. Second degree burns with some bigger blisters. But it's on the healing man. She needs to keep it moist with the uh, stuff and uh, just work with the stuff. It's, it's healing. It's just taking a, a slow process and stuff. She went down yeah. and check again. Sorry, do you have any plantain leaves in your yard? Who? <laughs> you know, they're like that, it, it's a weed, mm -hmm. and it comes out like this, and it has these tall things in the middle. That's most of the flowers. Okay. Well, know. plantain leaves are amazing for burns. I, I don't know. She's got some plantain silver. Oh, good. Plantain silver. But, okay, I can get her some plantain <coughs> salve, too. Okay. She wanted to be here Saturday, so I don't know the situation is going to be here. All right. And I would just ask for us to remember to pray for our women's conference. I know it sounds like a lot of people that wanted to be here aren't going to be able to be here. So I'm praying that we have a guest coming. So I'm praying we have a good turnout for our guest and yeah. um, that that everybody that was invited that can will be here. I did bring talk to her today, by the oh, way. Oh, okay. So everything is, she's, everything is set. So okay. she's bringing somebody with her okay, cool. um, in case she's answering questions and somebody else needs help or something. But um um, she's also going to do something downstairs after we eat. Okay. okay. Surprise, we'll find out what it is on yeah. Saturday. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. I'm not going to reveal it though. It's okay. Cool. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I'll be surprised. <laughs> I, like, I like surprises. Remember, right, Michael? You mean like something's supposed to be yours? I let him have his fun. <laughs> Um, and then I would just ask for prayer. My friend Lori that used to work with us at PFM just lost her father. So she was on her way to his visitation tonight and texted me and just asked for prayer for her and for their family. It's always hard to lose a loved one. Um, he's been struggling in health for a long time, so in some ways it's a blessing when they're you know, not themselves anymore, but it's always hard to lose a loved one. So and prayers for her mom that it will not be alone, who's been the primary caretaker for a long time, and it'll be a big change for her mom too. All right, well, let's go and uh, prayer and invite the Lord in tonight. Heavenly hey, Father, we just going to pray, Lord, to gather together in your name, Jesus. And we lift up these praises before you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your work. We thank you for the healing that you're doing. We thank you for all of your blessings, Lord, your provision, Lord, that you're right on time every time. Yes, Lord, and for every need that is mentioned here tonight, for those who need healing, Lord, for their bodies, those who need doors in favor to open in business, Lord, those who need financial blessings, Lord, that you bring what everybody needs. You know the need, Lord, before we can even ask. You have a plan, Lord. Jesus, and your purposes and your plans come to pass, Lord. The blessings that you have laid for us along the way, Lord, that those rise and bear good fruit, Lord, as we give you the glory, Lord. Jesus, be with those who mourn, comfort those who mourn, and bring beauty for ashes, Lord. Right now, Lord, we pray for the women's conference this Saturday, Lord. Bring in the women, Lord, who need hope. Bring in the women who need love. Bring in the women who need a sense of belonging and purpose, Lord. Who need to know that they are beautiful and precious in your eyes, Lord. They need to know you, that they are your prized daughters, Lord. Jesus, we just ask you to bless all those here tonight, Lord. Those who come seeking. Those who come hungry, Lord. That you would feed us, Lord. Feed us as we gather together in your presence, Lord through worship and praise, Lord. Meet us here tonight, Lord. Renew our minds by the hearing of your word, Lord. Forgive our unbelief, Lord, as faith arises. As revelation comes, Lord. Let your word be a lamp unto our feet to guide the next step each day, every way, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you are good. We thank you, Lord, that you are faithful. We thank you, Lord, that when we call upon you, we are confident to know that what we ask in your name shall be done, Lord. Jesus.
Jesus, Jesus. As the seasons turn, Lord, in our physical world, let there be a shifting in the realm of your spirit, Lord, to open the doors of favor, to open the doors of blessing that have been hidden, Lord. Reveal them as this season, as this next season is a harvest season, a season to reap, Lord, and a season to enjoy the bounty of the harvest. Reveal the humble doors of blessing, Lord, in our lives, the opportunities to be a blessing, Lord. What joy it is to be blessed, to be a blessing. As we pour out the gifts that you've given us, Lord, for your glory and for your name, Lord, that others might know you through the blessings and through the gifts that you've given each of us. Truth, joy, peace, and love. But above all is love, Lord. Let us love one another, Lord. And let us love you with all that we are. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Um, we have prayed for Kim Stanley. Yeah. Sunday after church and she was able to find her pretty soon right afterwards and I'm able to get her into broad lines for treatment and then we agreed so thank the Lord that no harm became of her and she's heading on the right path and just be able to lift Angie up in prayer. That's remember Angie Kim, yeah. Okay. Um, I don't have the clicker. Oh, perfect. All right, just a reminder if you brought your phone tonight to turn the cell phones off this Friday, Eastern Gate. Yep, we're pressing in. Uh, it's going to be a full, a full weekend, um, a very full weekend. Uh, we, yes, we'll have House of Prayer Friday night, just pressing through, setting the foundation for the weekend uh, coming up. I know there's a lot of things going on, and we're going through. The storm causing peace and speaking to peace to the storms. I know uh, a lot of ladies like to talk about may not be able to come and stuff. It's and most of it's distractions, mm -hmm. and we'll buy those distractions Friday night. Also, uh, mm -hmm. we'll lay the foundation. We're just going to mm -hmm. claim it, and cause yes. it, mm -hmm. and uh, prepare to basically roll out the red carpet for the Holy Spirit to take over the whole weekend. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, this. This uh, Friday night, uh, I didn't make a poster for it, but uh, there's a prayer burn going on up in Heartland the next day during the women's conference here. Uh, I'm taking a bold step. Uh, I'll be up there at 5 to 7, standing in the gap. Whoever can make it great, I understand James and I already talked, and a couple of the uh, gentlemen up there will sit in with us just to support us. Uh, Rick Arrowwood, John Taylor, uh, base, all base, and uh, uh, lead guitar and stuff like that will step in with us and stuff. So if you can make it, I know you ladies will be exhausted or you'll be exhilarated. Okay? <laughs> I'm not going to shut that door because I've seen God moving and people want to roll and go and go and go. But that's between you and the Lord. So yeah. I just thought I'd dovetail on that one on the backside. So we're pressing in. This is the weekend. All right. Praise the Lord. And this Saturday, Sparkle shirts and all. Ladies, wear your uh, sparkle shirts. If you haven't grabbed one, please grab one on the way out. Um, we'll have extras for visitors. Um, hopefully I'll have enough. Um, but you know what I'm doing tomorrow night. And um, <laughs> make them more t-shirts. <laughs> uh, yeah, so come. And then don't forget to sign up for uh, the sign-up sheet in the back for our soup dinner, the 19th. Yeah. And praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's, uh, that's a lot of fellowship. I'm excited. That gets me excited. I love seeing you guys outside of the services. I love seeing you in the services, but I love seeing you outside the services where we can just be ourselves and be family. I love it. I'm excited. Um, Ron, you want to come take an offering for us tonight? Thank you. Lord, we thank you that you watch over your word to fit for me. Everything is written, all your promises are yea and amen. Thank you. Give us more revelation that we may be able to walk in the light that you've given us. I thank you for this offering as you bless us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, I'm going to love. Are you?
Lord, for my brothers and my sisters, whom the kingdom is placed within. Many times, Lord, in the past, we've looked for some, some heavenly river to flow out of the sky or come out of the ground or something else like that. But Lord, as you reveal through your love and your mercy and your grace, Lord, that you want to flow out of your people. You want to flow out of your people, Lord. And if everyone is in this place, would flow. This place would be so full of the river. Yes. Yes. Let it come forth. Yes. And when it starts coming forth, it'll be raging. <laughs> it's going to get wild. We're going to see the rapids. We're going to see the, the falls. We're going to see it. We're going to see even still places, but it's going to be raging because it's been bottled up for so long. It's been bottled up for so long. We let the dam busting loose. The whole levee is letting go.
Praise God. Father, we are just so thankful for the testimonies that we heard tonight, for how you're working in our lives. And Lord, all you require of us is to believe. Lord, nothing is impossible with you. And we are so grateful, Lord, for your manifest presence in our lives, individually and collectively. And we know, Lord, that you are doing great things. And greater manifestations are to come as we believe for greater things. Lord, help us not to limit our confidence in you. And Lord, if we will, everything is possible in Jesus' name. Lord, we believe for increase in every area of our lives, for each individual here and for the church itself. And Lord, we thank you in advance of that manifestation. We declare it to be our reality. Yes. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap and praise God. Amen. Amen. God bless you all for being here. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Suzanne, for opening. And thank you, worship team. Praise God. Good job. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. I was thinking earlier when uh, when Sally and I first got together, which is about 40 years ago now, I was working uh, for a meat processing company selling uh, meat processing equipment in uh, eastern Iowa, western Illinois, and Wisconsin. She went with me a couple of times on some of my trips, praise the Lord. That was quite an experience, amen, but pr just prior to that, before I took over the eastern uh, sales territory, I was working in accounts receivable for the same company, and uh, part of my job was to collect uh, overdue bills, which I think I was very poor at, which is probably why they put me on the road, thought I might sell more than I could collect, praise the Lord, <laughs> amen. And I remember one guy I called, because I was selling to, uh, to mainly uh, uh, packing houses. Well, Bookie Pack was still in business here in Des Moines, Iowa Pack. I had those two, uh, Rath Pack over in Waterloo and some bigger uh, accounts in Illinois. But I remember this guy had a locker plant. It was, a, you know, it was, they, it was like a Kelowna locker, those kind of things. You know, they, they would process meat, so they bought smaller equipment, not the bigger stuff that we'd sell to the packing houses, but they still bought splitting saws, you know, and, and uh, scales and uh, small smokers and different things like that. So anyway, his, his bill was way, way overdue. And I remember calling him and I said, uh, you know, your bill is a year old. And it just was quiet on the other end of the line, you know, and I said, so? And it stayed quiet. And then he said, well, and I said, what, are you, what, are you gonna, what, what have you got to say? And he, it went silent again for a minute. And then he said, happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help myself. I just burst out laughing, you know. I mean, that was the end of the collection. I just thought, you know, this guy's, he's not taking this serious, you know. So, but I'll, I'll never forget that. It just cracked me up. Well, the bill's a year old, so. Happy birthday, praise the Lord. <laughs> I thought if I ever get in that position, I want to use that. I want to use that. Praise God. Anyway, praise God. That was, that kind of uh, shortened my career in accounts receivable, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But anyhow, let's, uh, <laughs> let's get on with tonight. I'm going to be brief tonight and uh, get you home before the freeze. Let's get really cold tomorrow. Praise God. So uh, let's start with Joshua chapter 18 and, and verse 3. Now I'm going to just briefly here repeat a couple of things that I spoke to at the end of uh, Sunday's message just to kind of get some context here for what I want to do this evening really quickly. And so in Joshua 18 and 3, Joshua said to the children of Israel, How long are you slack to go to possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers has given you? Now we understand that that was a physical land. For us, we're talking about the kingdom of God. We're talking about a spiritual uh, reality. Amen. 
And as I said Sunday, it's time for us to begin to walk in this reality, in this land that is uh, described uh, as walking the length, the breadth, the height, and the depth, which is what relates to Ephesians, uh, how we are to know God, how we are to understand our relationship with God. And so, uh, so that we can see the promises of God manifest in our lives. That happens by us literally being aware of our uh, inhabiting the kingdom of God. Amen. So let's look at this quickly. Ephesians chapter 3, uh, verses 16 through 21. Now this is a reality for us, but just like the, uh, the children of Israel, there's obstacles. There's, you know, God's given us promises, but we see the natural things that deny the promise of God. The, you know, the bill, the, the physical condition, the whatever it is. Now, just like with Sheila and John's situation, if John would have done nothing more, and Sheila had done nothing more than just, oh my God, what about this hand? He'd still be dealing with the hand. That's my belief. But instead, she decides to pray and believe in God to heal. Amen. The result is he got the promise, right? I mean, he, he actually inhabited the kingdom where this is already a reality. Amen? Amen. It's only when we're outside of that reality that we can't get the benefits. We can't get the promises unless we cross into and inhabit that reality. And that takes more than just a... Uh, a mental ascent, you have, to, you have to just totally have a paradigm shift in the way that you think about things in order for that to happen. So, that He would grant you, according to the riches of His glory, to be strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and height, and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Mm. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. So it's, it's time. In fact, it's past time for us to walk in the power and the authority of the kingdom of God. It's time to, to lose our this idea of being slaves, of having to... Uh, you know, scrimp and scrounge and for every victory, but to be in charge, to have the authority to declare what is ours and then operate through that or live in that. Amen. If you're a son, amen, that's not genetics or uh, uh, praise the Lord, gender specific, but it's just a child of God. That's what all of us are. And if we're children of God, then we're heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We have a right. We have a, a right to the promises of God, to everything that is in that kingdom. It belongs to us already, right now. Praise the Lord. So the kingdom of God is the abundant life. Amen. It's not, uh, I don't believe by accident that this church is Abundant Life Community Church. I didn't name it. It's what it was when they asked me to, you know, to, to pastor. So, but accidents don't happen in the kingdom of God. God has, and, and there's a reason for that because he's trying to point us to something and we can just call it, well, it's a name on a sign or it's just what we put on the, you know, the business cards or whatever. But it's a reality, amen, uh, in terms of who we are and what we are in Christ. That's God's life in men. That's abundant life. That's a greater life than what we could produce on our own. Amen. It's, uh, it's the 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 natural and the supernatural. Yep. Praise the Lord. It's the visible and the invisible. I said before, it's the power of God in these weakened vessels, in these earthly vessels. His strength is made perfect in our flesh, in our natural uh, humanity. Praise the Lord. It, he's not coming to bring it to us. We've already read that it's the power that's in us, amen, that produces this, amen, not a power that has to come from somewhere off in space somewhere or, or some other... Uh, you know, heavenly realm, but it we are a heavenly realm if we understand who we are in Christ. Praise the Lord. All right, now, so let's go to Ephesians. Now, I've got a, uh, some scripture here to read, but we'll, we'll kind of dissect it as we go quickly. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 16 through 23. And so that we see our reality. I remember uh, Suzanne, uh, I, don't, I think Sheila, you may, no, maybe not. I can't remember if you were there or not, but nevertheless, I know Suzanne was. When we first started looking at Ephesians and 
claiming a scripture. It was, a, it was like a, uh, uh, what, a life word, you know, or a word for the church is what, you know, what we were looking for. And we, we, this is what we ended up with was in Ephesians 1, Ephesians 3, and we were talking about these things. Well, it's not by accident it, it, that, that we chose those, even though we didn't know why we were choosing them at the time. They just seemed like, well, that sounds spiritual, praise the Lord. I don't want to sound too funky, but that's kind of, you know, where it was at. Amen. But still, God knew, even though we didn't really know why we were doing it, that's, that's God did. And he was trying to show us something through that. So, and I think little by little, we have seen more and more revelation and understanding of these, of these scriptures uh, in our lives and in the uh, corporate life of the church here. So, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints... And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also that which is to come. And hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Now, I'm not doing a whole bunch here tonight because I'm got i going to go further with this on Sunday because I'm still dealing with that Daniel 2 and Daniel 7 stuff that we're, we, you know, we're still struggling with something being out here in the future, and it's all history. Amen. And uh, if we understand that to be the fact, we can operate in it instead of waiting for something to happen. Praise the Lord. All right, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 6. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now, if you can, Mike, if you'll go back to Ephesians 1.19. He says, what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us? What is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the work of his mighty power? That is the exceeding greatness of his power towards you and me. Amen. So God raised up Jesus far above all principality, all power, all might, all dominion, and every name that's named, not only in this world, but in that which is to come. Amen. So whatever it is, Jesus, by the power of God, has been raised up to sit with him far above it. So whatever your it is at this moment, whether it's a healing, whether it's finances, whether it's some other thing, Jesus has been raised up far above that it. That thing, whatever that thing might be for each one of us at any given time. Amen. That it changes, but the one that's raised far above it, it ha has never changed. He doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is above all power, all principle, in this world and that which is to come. So what does that mean to us? All right. Verses uh, 22 and 23. And hath put all things under his feet, gave him to be head over all things to the church, that's us, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. That's what Paul was praying. And that was a prayer, a Holy Spirit led prayer. Amen. Ephesians 2 and 6. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So if he's above, so are we. Whatever the it is, we are above it. Yes. We have dominion over it. We have authority over it. Whatever the it might be. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. In the heart of God, in the mind of God, not only did he raise Jesus up to that place at his right hand of authority, he raised us up. Yes. Yes. Praise God. You and me are raised up to sit with him next to Jesus on the throne of grace. Come boldly, amen, to the throne of grace. It's, it's critical for every one of us believers to know and to understand what Jesus said, what he's actually saying here. Look at Matthew 28, 18. It's, it's really a parallel scripture in a lot of ways to what we just read. Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Then what? Go ye therefore. Go ye therefore. 
it's the same thing that he's talking about here in Ephesians. We have been raised up. Jesus is raised up above all power, principalities, everything, all in this world and that which is to come. Amen. And we have been seated with him in heavenly places. So he has been given this authority and he immediately delegates it to us. Amen. All power is given to me. Go then. Go ye therefore. Teach all nations. Baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Give them the kingdom. Amen. Export the kingdom that you have received. Praise God. Amen. So you go. Immediately he delegates this authority. Amen. That has been given to him to his body. Amen. What is his body? His fullness. We are the fullness of God in the earth. His body. Praise the Lord. Amen. Ephesians chapter 3 uh, verses 14 and 15. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Now think, think about this. He bows his knee unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, of whom the whole family in heaven and in earth is named. We, that's us. We are the family of God. We are the offspring of God. We are the body of Christ. Amen. The whole family in heaven and in earth is named after the Father. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. All right, Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. <coughs> Philippians 2, 9 through 11. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in earth, things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So what's the Holy Spirit saying? Philippians 2 verses 5 and 6. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Right. And he said, we're seated above all this. We have power, all the principalities of this world, the world to come. Amen. We are seated with him there. Let this mind be in you. All right. So now we've got this, right? We understand this. Let's go back and re look at this again. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 16 through 23. With this in mind, let this mind be in you. Be Recognize who you are, what your authority is, what your position is. Amen. Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Praise the Lord. You don't have to look far for him. It's right here. Praise the Lord. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. We just heard about the Jesus, the glory. Amen. The glory is in us, in the saints. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right. Uh, go on through 21. What is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Praise the Lord. 2 and 6. Chapter 2, verse 6. We've been given the same name, right? Isn't that what we just read a moment ago? All of us have been named after the Father. He's raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Equal with God. Filled with all the fullness of God. 
That sounds like blasphemy if you're thinking from religious terms. But based on what the Scripture says, unless we get this revelation, we're not going to function as Jesus did in this earth. How did Jesus function in this earth? He functioned as a man full of God, full of the Holy Spirit. The works that I do, they're not my works. It's the Father that's in me. He does the works. He says, uh, the words that I speak, they're not my works. I'm going to say what I hear my Father say. I'm only saying what I'm hearing my Father say. Oh, my back. No, by His stripes, I'm healed. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, I don't know how I'm going to do this. He has poured out a blessing upon me. Amen. Give, and it's given unto you. Press down, shake it together, running over. Men, give unto your bosom. Mm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Jesus, to the, to the uh, religious people of his day, they said he's a blasphemer. He makes himself equal with God. What else could he do? God had declared him to be his reality in the earth. That's what we are, his body, the fullness of God in the earth. We're, we're striving to try to be better, to be, you know... Jesus clones or something. We already are, amen, the genetic offspring, the, the gene of God dwells in us, in every one of us. We are His offspring. We carry His fullness. If we believe that, we will lay hands on the sick. We will cast out devils. We'll speak to things that are not as though they are, and they will come to pass. That's how God, that's how our Father operates. He speaks, and they happen. Praise God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. You're a joint heir with the one who owns everything. There is no lack. There's only a lack of understanding. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Our Father, God, created everything. All things. Amen. And Jesus, our brother, inherited all of those things. And we set in authority, in his authority, over all things. Yes. Things in heaven, things in earth, things beneath the earth. The devil doesn't own this earth. Read Psalms, uh, I think it's 24, 2 or 3. The, the earth, the heavens and the earth, they belong to God. The devil doesn't have it. He may have had some power here, but not anymore. Jesus took that authority back and gave it to us. The authority to rule and reign in this earth belongs to us. But if we don't operate in it, we may as well not have it. We have to know, and then we have to be bold enough to step out in faith and declare what God has said. We need to speak like our Father. We need to sound like our Father speaks. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. We have authority. We have power. All power is given to us. Things in heaven, things in earth, things beneath the earth. Everything. There should be no lack. Amen. Amen. Shalom. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Shalom means nothing broken, nothing missing. Amen. That's the, the purest description of what that word means. Glory. Hallelujah. And we have the Prince of Peace living in us. There should be no lack. Amen. I'm not criticizing if you're struggling with lack. I'm just saying the only way to change that reality is to get to the kingdom and operate from the kingdom instead of trying to operate as a Christian in the world. We're in this world. We're not of this world. We're just in it. Amen. The kingdom came for this world so this world wouldn't be dominated by the way it has been dominated for the last thousands of years. Jesus came 2,000 years ago to restore us to authority, God, man, in the earth with the authority and the power to control by our words everything that happens in this earth. Yes. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
Sounds too easy. Sounds too simple. That's the good news of the gospel. Yes, Lord. Amen. We are no longer under a law. We are under a sonship, under an inheritance. And it is our right, our responsibility, you might even say, to take this kingdom and spread it throughout this earth. And the only way you can do that is by declaring the same thing God declares. Yes, Lord. In the face of, I've got, that's one little post-it note I've got. I think it's on the refrigerator. Uh, in the face of defeat, we declare victory. Yes. When it looks like it's lost, we're, we're claiming gain. We're declaring that. Now, does it manifest instantaneously? No, because it takes faith. But if you'll believe it, you'll find that these manifestations will happen quicker and quicker and quicker. What took maybe a, a week, two weeks, a month to see manifest can happen in an instant. If we operate from that. But see, we keep fluctuating, deviating from this kingdom to the kingdom of God and back to the kingdom of this, of this world and back to the kingdom of God. And it's always about, well, I wasn't good enough or I didn't do this or I didn't do that. That's why it's so critical what I talked about last Sunday, and I will talk about again to some degree this Sunday, that we understand that is past. It's not future. We're not waiting for a kingdom to come. The kingdom has already come. It came 2,000 years ago. Yes, Lord. Amen. And it's been expanding. It's been extending itself ever since. It's a kingdom without end. An ever-increasing kingdom. How does it increase? By us. The kingdom came in a man, in, in Jesus. And it expands and extends itself, uh, amen, through people, amen. through his body. Amen. Unless we're functioning the way we're supposed to function, it doesn't increase. It just stays right where we are at. Uh -huh. And we don't even get the full benefit of it, Come on. let alone be able to export it to anybody else. Yes. This world doesn't need a religion. Nope. People don't need to know more rules and regulations. They don't need to be... Uh, condemned for whatever choices they've made. What they need is God. They need a, an experience with a loving God. Mm -hmm. Amen. The only way there's going to be any change in anybody's life is to embrace the goodness and the grace of God. But we've made that almost impossible for people because we've segregated and isolated and separated people based on everything from skin color to uh, you know their choices in, in life's you know you know what I'm saying? I don't, I, you know, whether it's homosexuality or, or whatever it might be, uh, alcoholism, addictions, and other things like that. We, we, we cut everybody out. We separate them all. And then not only by that, but then even we take people by, by uh, financial uh, conditions. Yeah. Education. I mean, we're, we're just, we're so demonic in that way. That's what the devil does. Tries to, ice, try to pick us apart. Try to set us apart. Try to say, that's not good. That's good. To God, it's all good. We're all beautiful in the eyes of God. Everything is beautiful to God. We are all equal in God. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. People need that. I need it. Yes. Everybody needs it. And we don't get to be the ones to choose who gets it and who doesn't get it. He died for everybody. Our responsibility is to export this. Let God deal with them. Let God take care of the, the, the fine-tuning of whatever might be going on in their life. But I can promise you this. There will be no change in their life if they don't ever come into contact with a God that loves them. Right. The only way that we change, the only way that we see growth in terms of our spirituality is by embracing the goodness and the grace and the acceptance, the, the, the affirmation of God in our lives. And that's for everybody, whether we like it or not. It's not a cultural thing. It's, it's not a social thing. It's a reality. It's a spiritual reality. Amen. That's what Jesus did all the time he was here. You don't see him. He's not hassling with the sinners, what we call sin. Amen. His problem is with the religious people that won't enter into the kingdom and they won't let anybody else enter in because they don't want to be part of it and then they're going to stop everybody else from having any part in it. Right. That was why he condemned them. That's why he judged them yes. for that. Yes. They, they had access to it. It was for them like everybody else. Mm -hmm. Now here's, what, here's my problem. You say, well, they, they, they didn't recognize their Messiah when, they, when he came. They didn't recognize that this kingdom was a spiritual reality. Well, we, it's easy to look back because we've got the New Testament to look back and say, oh, what idiots, what was wrong with them? I, I think it, the same thing happens with us. Yes. We're missing 
the benefit. We're missing what He came to give us. Yes, Lord. The love of God, the goodness of God, an inheritance we didn't earn, an inheritance we don't have to do anything except accept. We can be as guilty of missing the coming of our Messiah, our King, amen, Messiah, as they were. This is a, a spiritual reality is a greater reality than any natural reality because everything in the natural comes out of the Spirit. It can't be here unless it was there first. Praise the Lord. So we need to, we need to start thinking differently. We need to start seeing ourselves boldly as who we really are. I mean, I think we need to get to the point where people start calling us blasphemers. I really do, because I don't think until that happens, we haven't really arrived. Well, well, yeah, in another way, Paul said, you know, uh, am I saying that, uh, you know, this grace is so that you can sin and sin more and more and more and more? He said, God forbid. But, unless we're preaching it that way to where everybody thinks that's what we're saying, then we're not preaching what Paul preached. And that goes for this as well. The, the, the fact that we are equal with God. We didn't, we didn't say it. He said it. I didn't make it up. I'm not, I'm not trying to create a new doctrine here. I'm just saying what he already said. Why is it we think we're supposed to emulate Jesus we won't do the very fundamental things that he did? Right. We, what do you think? You're a king? Do, are you saying that or did somebody tell you that? Yeah, I'm a king. Amen. And a priest. He's the king of kings, but I, yes, I am a king. For that reason, for that purpose, I was born again. Woo! Yeah. That's the Holy Ghost. Amen. Jesus said, for that purpose, I come. Yeah. I was born into this world for this purpose, to be a king. Amen. We were born again yeah. in this kingdom. That we might be kings and priests. That we might... Further, the gospel that we might pre present the kingdom of God to everybody the way Jesus did. Yes, Lord. Amen. I'm looking forward to spring. I, I bought some chicken livers uh, the other day, yesterday, <laughs> day before yesterday. I like them, you know. It's a, it's a thing I, for me. I like chicken livers, okay? And, uh... <laughs> Uh, exactly. I went to check out, and the guy, the guy at the checkout counter said, you going fishing? <laughs> it's like 30 degrees out, you know. He said, fishing? No, I'm not going fishing. And he said, well, almost everybody that buys chicken livers is going fishing. I said, well, I'll be the only one biting on these. Uh, so. All right. Come on, man. I mean, what, what planet are you from? I'm eating. I'm not going fishing. I'm eating. This isn't bait. You know, this is food. This is dinner, for crying out loud. And they were quite good, as a matter of fact. And I actually even had some for lunch again today. Praise the Lord. And I never, not one of them touched water that I'm aware of. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We just have to recognize that God has raised us up and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We have been given authority. All authority was given unto me. He said, go then. Because it's mine, it's got to be yours. If it's mine, it's yours too. Because we are heirs and joint heirs. We ought to be doing what Jesus did. Should be no lack. If you got a tax bill coming, get some chicken livers. Get to the river, get you a fish. Amen? Amen. Pay your taxes and mine too. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not trying to be facetious. I'm just saying these are realities. These are truths that we need to embrace if we're ever going to get to where God wants us to be. Amen? Amen. Amen. So that this world will see the glory of God in His body. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord. God bless you all. Have a great day rest of your evening great rest of the week come back friday night be part of the uh, house of prayer and you ladies we're going to be praying for a great uh, uh, turnout and a real move of god for the women's conference as well so god bless you all in the meantime i'll see you friday and probably sunday praise the lord you're dismissed in jesus name